So do flatheads eat in the winter time? That's what the discussion is going to be about today, guys. I'm so happy that you're here. It's that time of year. We start seeing this stuff all over the internet. You see it on catfish forums, you see it on Facebook posts, Facebook groups, okay? You see it on YouTube, you see it on Twitter, you see it on everywhere. So is it a myth or is it reality? Do flatheads eat in the winter time or do they not? So what would be like the most egregious example of a flathead eating in the winter time? What, what's like the, the, the standard by which that would be proven or disproven? I would say catching one out of the ice, right? Like, like if you could catch one out of the ice, then, it's, then it either is or it isn't. So what I've got for you today, we're gonna get right into it. I've got a couple of clips, actually not clips, mostly just photographs. And the reason why I just got the clips, I just took photographs, screenshots of this, is because I've linked all of the videos where I got all of this information down in the description below. I want you guys to go check out their channels. I want you guys to see these videos for yourself. So this first one I want you to look at, I picked this one as the first one because I felt like it was like the, the best example of a flathead coming out of the ice. I absolutely believe this one is entirely genuine. So this first video is actually called Flathead Through the Ice. And this comes from a channel, it's a relatively small channel called Chaw Boys Outdoors. It only has something like 800, almost 900 views. Uh, it, this video, in my opinion, should have like 10,000 or 15,000 or maybe even 100,000. Uh, this guy is obviously, he's reeling in a fish. You don't know what it is. He pulls it up and it's a flathead catfish. And here's a picture of that right now. As you can see right here, the, I, I mean, this fish is clearly caught through the ice. You guys are more than welcome to go and check that video out. Here is the second picture. This guy, his buddy that's with him, he's like yelling at him. He's like, okay, come over here. This is insane. This is crazy. And he's absolutely right. It is. It's very rare. It's an incredibly rare event. And here you can see a still shot of them taking the hook out of its mouth. It's, it's like a little green uh, sort of jig or something like that. Uh, and if you see, you could tell the flathead's mouth is completely open and they had to do that in order to get it out. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced that this is, in fact, authentic. Uh, this is a real, the real deal right here. This fish was, in fact, hooked and caught in the mouth and pulled out of the ice. Uh, an incredibly rare event. Good on those guys. Go check out their channel. Uh, this video should have a ton of views on it, and it doesn't. It, it, it's not a long video either. It, it's very quick. It's to the point, and it's really cool to see. So go check that video out. So, but does that like? Does that really mean like, oh my gosh, yes, you can catch flatheads out of the ice? In the, for the sake of possibility, yes, it does mean that. It's not impossible. So let's look at another one. Now this one's gonna be a lot more famous, right? A lot of you guys probably know who this YouTuber is. He, his name is Josh, and he is the host of the Pig Patrol TV uh, YouTube channel. Most of you might recall a few years ago, he was fishing with a few people. One of them was his partner and she's jigging through the ice and she hooks into a massive flathead catfish and pulls this thing out of the ice. It's probably somewhere in the order of 50-ish pounds. Uh, it's a massive fish, right? Here's a picture of that fish coming up out of the ice. You can see it's absolutely enormous. These guys are freaking out right now. And then Josh makes this claim right here. Yep, hooked in the mouth and it's giant. So we're gonna examine this a little bit. We're gonna take a closer look at this flathead coming out of the water and you be the judge if you wanna count this one or not. So here we go, here's the first image of this flathead coming out and we're gonna zoom in right here. Okay, check this out. Uh, kinda of grainy, you don't really see much. Uh, little sus, but it doesn't really matter. Let's go on to the next one. Here we, we're, we've got a, a little bit later frame where this fish is fully out of the ice. And I'm gonna zoom in right here. And you can see right here, this is the hook. And in, in my opinion, it's clearly on the outside of the mouth, not hooked in the mouth. Does it really matter? It does and it doesn't. Let me tell you, for me, why it doesn't matter and why I would still count this fish as being caught in the, in the mouth through the ice. Thank you, truck, for ruining my video. They should have just shut this road down so I could film this, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. Arrogant. The reason I would count this is because she was jigging there for quite a while. I would have assumed she would have hooked it way before that. And so what I surmise probably happened, this flathead caught the scent of this bait, maybe even had a visual on it and moved in on it. Got too close, got ready to do what flatheads do, suck it up, got too close. 
and it accidentally hooked right under the bottom in the front of the bottom rib. I fully believe that fish was coming to eat that bait, but in its lethargic state, it just, it just fumbled around and accidentally got hooked. So would I count that one? Yeah, I'd probably count that one. I, I would still count that as caught through the ice. It is what it is. Does it really matter? No. Uh, why doesn't it matter? Well, we're not talking about records here. We're not talking about legality. And the fish was immediately put back in the water. It wasn't taken home. It wasn't caught illegally, uh, so on and so forth. And so no harm, no foul. Does it really matter? No, it doesn't really matter in this video. So when does it matter? When does it really matter? if the fish is caught in the mouth or not coming out of the ice. Like, what is the significance of that? Like, who really cares? Well, when records are on the line, it, it, it kind of matters. It, it matters a lot. Here's another video that I'm gonna show you guys, mostly gonna be clips. I might stick a video in there too or not. I don't know, I might pause this video just so you can see it. I don't know if I'm going to. I want you guys to go watch this video. So here's a video of the Michigan State record being caught on film which flathead records in general are rare anyways, but this one was actually on film, which makes it extra special. So these guys are reeling this fish in, they're reeling it in, they know it's big, and they see it coming from a long ways. It's very clear water. I mean, it's really crazy, like how, how clear this, this fish coming up is, and they can see it. They, they don't know exactly how big it is. And you can tell these guys are not flathead guys. These are not catfish guys. This was actually caught in a lake that wasn't supposed to have flatheads in it. There is a river not too far from there that has flatheads in it, but without a person probably taking and putting it there, uh, they really don't know how a flathead even got into this lake, but it did. And so they're pulling this bad boy up. And I don't know how much of this clip I want to show because one, copyright. Two, I kind of just want to give these guys the credit they deserve and send you over there to watch it. I want you to tell me after you watch it and tell me what you think of it. Uh, but this flathead's coming up, it's coming up to the surface and it gets almost to the surface, almost ready to breach the hole. And one of the guys makes a comment, they're gonna need a bigger hole, won't fit through the hole. And then all of a sudden the fish makes a hard right turn and boom, makes a hard run and leaves. And then the video cuts out. And then the, the very next frame comes back, they're just holding this giant fish, like five, six feet out of the hole. Like that's the next frame. Like the, the fish runs away and then they're holding the fish. Let me just tell you guys one thing. Like, like if you're gonna film an unbelievably rare event that is unbelievably rare. It, it is incredibly rare to catch a flathead out of the ice. Making it even more rare that it's a record flathead, you need to film the whole thing. No editing, no nothing. You need to film the whole entire thing. So why didn't they do that? Why did they cut this part out? They didn't cut the minutes and minutes of them fighting this fish of just boring, just blah, blah, blah. They filmed all of that, but they didn't film probably the most important part of that video. Now you can see when that fish comes up that it looks like the hook is near the mouth. So it could be a similar situation of what exactly happened uh, in the previous clip, but for records, it counts. For YouTube, entertainment, it doesn't really matter. But when you're talking records, it matters. And in this case, this absolutely turned out to be Michigan's state record flathead. Everybody's in this picture. They're, they're, one guy's even screaming, it's 70, it's 70. This fish actually turned out to be 52 pounds. The irony here is that it doesn't really matter anyways because the record was broken again just a few years later with a 53.35 pounder. So that's the new Michigan flathead record. So the most interesting part of this video to me is being able to say that there is a considerable likelihood that the Michigan State flathead record was actually illegally caught. Illegally seems like a pretty harsh word, but in the state of Michigan, a fish has to physically take the bait into its mouth under its own power, right? That, I, the law is quite simple. I'll put it up here on the screen so you guys can read it. And a record just simply wouldn't be, it wouldn't count. Doesn't really matter because the record got broken anyways. So if you would go down to the comment section, tell me what you guys think. Most of the time, whenever I hear people say that they absolutely bite all winter long and I say, oh, well, where are you from? Arizona. Yeah, they probably do bite year round in Arizona. That's probably a thing. Uh, same with Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Florida, maybe even Georgia. There's a lot of places where they catch flatheads through the winter time with a mm, tiny bit of regularity. It is still rare. It is still rare. 
but it does happen. Now, the farther north you get, it comes increasingly rare. And there really is somewhere right around the Mason-Dixon line, it does seem to be a cutoff where it almost never happens above that. It really almost never happens. Here in Southern Indiana, it would be like, I mean, it, it, I would, I don't know if I would call it winning the lottery, but it, I mean, it would be incredibly rare to, for something like that to occur. So here's what a fellow friend and YouTuber of mine, he is the host of Hooked Catfish. He's over in Illinois. So obviously it's a cold place. Uh, here's what he had to say. Uh, and I absolutely agree with him uh, 100%. My basic take on this is gonna be that I believe in certain areas that flatheads do bite in the wintertime more so than others. Uh, it really depends on the fish. I think you're gonna find fish that, that never stop really, really feeding through the wintertime. I think you're gonna find that most of them, that's not the case. I think most of them do in fact lay lethargic for probably two to three months and really don't do much of all, uh, at all. <laughs> Love you, kids. So there it is. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you got something out of it. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you want to see more like this, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I will see you in the next one.